Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are going to be taking a look at something really awesome, and that is a new hostile mob farm design. I like to call it the Mob Sweeper, and as I'm sure most of you have guessed, it uses the new slime block mechanics that were introduced in one of the latest snapshots to make a fairly cool design that pushes all of the mobs off the blocks. Now I'm not going to be doing too much chatting in this episode because the design is fairly self-explanatory. Instead, I am just going to get straight to it, hit this escape button, and go into hard mode, and we should see that monsters will begin spawning. So, I am going to go down to the bottom, and we should begin to see them pouring out, okay? Here are the first few. It always starts off slowly when you go from peaceful mode into hard, but now we should see out the back, there will be tons and tons of mobs flowing out. There we go. It is beginning to warm up, and you can see that all of their drops are going into the hoppers, which will eventually feed into the chest. Here comes a big bundle. That's what I'm talking about. So, if we take a in this chest here you can see that all of the drops really are building up almost everything can spawn inside this mob spawner including endermen you might not see any of them falling but they can spawn because this is only three blocks tall over here i have got one module of the farm and now i am going to try my best to explain to you how this all works. I'm not particularly good at explaining things, but I am going to be trying my best. So quite simply, you can see we have got ourselves a set of caterpillar pistons. And what these do is they pull this wall back and forth along the platform. So any mobs that spawn on it will be gradually pushed off the edge. Now, one little bug that I have noticed about this design, and it is a bit peculiar, is that if you walk towards the wall, occasionally you can go on through it. And I have seen a few of the mobs doing this, and I don't really know how to fix it, but it does lower the efficiency ever so slightly. Now, as far as this big, ugly, and uncompact circuit out the back is concerned, that is all to control the timings of these pistons. It uses a lot of very specific timings. We've got monostable circuits and everything over here. I'll quickly show you an example of how it works. So, for these slime blocks to move in this direction, we need to send a one tick pulse through this piston here, and then we need to send a pulse through this piston that will drag this piston forwards so that we can then repeat the process once again. The reason that we have this hopper timer out the back is that is so we can keep it traveling in the same direction for a certain length of time. Then when it reaches the end, the hopper timer will switch and it will go in the opposite direction. Otherwise, it will just stay at one end and never move, which would be fairly useless, wouldn't it? As I'm sure most of you have come to the conclusion already, this mob spawner is just far too complicated and far too expensive to be user friendly in survival Minecraft. There is no way anyone in their right mind would be building this one, quite simply because there are better designs out there that are far cheaper, and I will put links to some of those down in the description. But it was a very interesting to project to work on, and also a new concept is always nice to see, so if you do want to take a closer look at the redstone behind it, then of course I will put a world download down in the description. And if you really, really want a tutorial, then of course I will crack on with one if there are enough requests. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching guys, this has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. All of this circuitry that you see over here is to do with the timing circuits, and these are very specific, and that is because they are integral to the way that these pistons move. I have a little bit of a demonstration here as to how we move this slime block wall across. So, first off, a one tick pulse travels through this piston, which spits out the blocks, and then a pulse goes through this block and pulls the piston along, meaning that we get ourselves a little bit of a caterpillar piston. And this obviously works in the opposite direction. You just put the one tick pulse through this piston. Oh! What? That was strange.